In this video, we're gonna take a look at a turquoise ink by Noodlers, one of their lubricated inks, Turquoise Eel. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the turquoise playlist, so if you'd like to find a different turquoise ink, you can find it there. I'm an ink guy, I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade as brown goes darker to lighter, quick goes dark to light to dark. Fox is lighter on the bottom of the F than it is on the top of the X and then very dark into the OX. I said X on those when I meant Fs. Six seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, decent shading as fox goes light to dark, jumps goes light to dark, brown is nice and dark, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows, actually they both show some color variation, much more in the extra fine, although it's not too bad in either in the writing. And a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Twisby Mini with a fine nib was inked up, used for day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than a stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer spots of shading, like quick goes darker to lighter to darker. But that's about it there. 11 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, the same thing, only a couple spots. Brown goes a little darker to a little lighter. The starts a little lighter, gets a little darker. 17 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show color variation. There are little bits in the writing and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this is just a straightforward turquoise dye. Now it starts light and it is uh, attaching itself to the paper as it's moving up and getting darker as it's moving up in a very nice gradient gathering at the top. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes and we only see a slight line forming at the bottom giving the idea that it might be a little bit resistant, maybe. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, just a tad lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show color variation, but it's not happening in the writing and a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it performs very well. There is a slight bit of blurriness that occurs on the capital H in the cross line. Just that little bit. On the majority, I feel safe using this in a note-taking situation if I need to go back and highlight. Now, water is reactivating and lifting most of this ink, but not all of this ink, and that's only with 30 seconds. Pen flush is doing a bit more. It's breaking it down a little bit faster. We see the very beginnings of the white of the paper coming through, and the one-third bleach solution completely obliterates it. But it only took water to get this out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on Leuchtturm 1917 paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading, lazy starts a little darker, gets a little lighter, 
Quick looks darker than brown, which goes a little darker to a little lighter in eight seconds to dry. Medium is just a tad darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen. There isn't really much shading I can find, 10 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show color variation and it shows itself a little bit better in the extra fine, not at all in the medium. In the smear test, you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's turquoise eel has a viscosity of 2.44, making it normal. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity and all that stuff's done, then down in the link or down in the description is a link to the video. Let's look at a memoranda pad like I would have used in the Marines. No bleeding, no ghosting. Looking at that medium, there's a tiny bit of feathering, but really very under control. It is there in the turquoise but not bad at all, not distracting, not really a problem. There's no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the, as the medium. It has no feathering, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation. We're not getting it. And I forgot to do the smear test. So it's a guess, but I expect it would probably be fine. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's turquoise eel has an average dry time of 10 seconds, making it a bit faster drying than normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. We do have a lot of bleed spots that are going through pretty much wherever there's writing, there's some bleed spots. It is not touching the page underneath, but it does make the back of the paper entirely unusable. Now, the medium, we have no feathering, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. It, it really is performing incredibly well there on such cheap paper. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the, than the medium. There is a, there's no feathering, there's a tiny bit of spread where it goes to about a fine. No halo, no sheen, no shade, but to me, great performance on this paper. One second to dry. The scrubby shows a tiny bit of color variation left to right. We're not getting it in the writing. And the smear test, you're not gonna smear it, so you don't have to worry about being able to recover it. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's turquoise eel, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a black ink by Pelican in their 4001 series, black. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Noodler's turquoise eel? One of the amazing things about the Noodler's Eel series is how good a color match it is to their standard series. I like having an eel ink around just to occasionally be able to run through my piston fillers. That's what the lubrication's for, to lube that piston. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Well, if you're just using it in general in your pens, a wet pen's gonna eat up any shading that it has and a medium flow, medium or fine are gonna put down a decent tone with some decent shading from time to time. But it's not really what it's made for and when it comes to your piston fillers, most of the time you have the nib you have. So I don't know that it's about choosing that nib for the eel inks. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Sailor's Sakura Mori.